Now, when it comes to Brexit, there's lots of talk, isn't there, about uh, red tape and all the rest of it and Brexit freedoms and Brexit benefits and all the rest of it. The, the debate rumbles on and on. Uh, one of the areas now under the microscope is the so-called Working Time Directive. Uh, you might be familiar with this, basically. It restricts the amount of hours many of us can work unless, of course, you opt out. Well, uh, the government is basically looking at getting rid of that and they're saying uh, it's going to save businesses about a billion pounds a year. It's going to capitalise on all of these kind of freedoms and Brexit freedoms and all the rest of it. But uh, many people on the flip side of the argument are saying, whoa there, Tiger, I see what you're doing here. You're gradually, inch by inch, rowing back on workers' rights. Aaron, what says you? I am going to say that we shouldn't uh, get rid of the Working Time Directive. There are lots of opt-outs. If you want an opt-out as an employee, you can opt-out. Uh, I'm very sympathetic to the idea that if a, a worker or an individual wants to work more, they can. That's actually something you can already do within the existing legislation. Uh, it doesn't apply to senior director roles. It doesn't apply to people who are self-employed. It doesn't apply to people who are working in industry with 24-hour um, staffing necessities. Mm -hmm. It doesn't apply to emergency workers. So uh, it will frustrate a tiny subsection of the population. And like I say, if that's a major issue for them they can apply for an opt-out. So, look, I, I, I'm not fussed. It's not the hill I want to die on. But fundamentally, I, I don't think it's a massive issue. Although I should say, as somebody on the left, my preference for defending workers' rights is sexual wage bargaining and trade unions. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of the state saying from above what you can and can't do. But I think the extent of this uh, legislation and how much... It impacts people on an everyday basis. I think that's often overstated for political reasons. And do you think, speaking of those political reasons, do you think people are being too quick now? It's, to me, it feels like anything and everything, there are certain uh, segments of society that just don't like Brexit and they don't like the Tories. So whatever it is, it becomes less about the issue, so today, this particular directive, and more just about another stick, basically, to beat Brexit on the head with. Mm. Is that fair or I think, not? I think that is fair. There's a lack of nuance, I think, generally in, in, in these kinds of debates. That applies both to the left and the right. You know, I, I, I won't name names. There's a certain shock jock on a, on a talk radio station in this country who I think is actually just as toxic as any, any right-wing journalist. I know who you mean, because I follow you on Twitter. I won't, I won't say their names. So I, I, I'm not in the business of pointing fingers, but I do think there's real nuance to stuff like this. And I do think, you know, with this press release, the government is saying it could unlock productivity. Well, look, this legislation is already in place. It's enforced in France, the Netherlands, Germany and they have higher levels of productivity than we do. So if only it was that easy to increase UK productivity. Martin? It's obscene that a single European Union directive is in control in Britain now. It's exactly what people voted to, to get rid of in 2016, take back control of our borders, of our money and our laws. You know, the fact that Strasbourg or Brussels has a single scintilla of control of how we work, how we rule our country, is astonishing. All these years later, and today we've seen another massive U-turn from the Conservative Party. I just don't know what the Tories stand for anymore. Now, they said they when were going to When you say about U-turn, are you all about they had these 4,000 things, they were going to get rid of them all, and it rode back to about 800, then the it rode down again. The so retained EU yeah. um, law bill, uh, which was about the bonfire of red tape that we had promised by Rees-Mogg, uh, by the Brexiteers, by the European Research Group, and we've seen a U-turn today. And now it's going to be as few as 600. And all these years later, you know, here we are still tied to Strasbourg, tied to Brussels. And as far as law goes, it's about supremacy of law. One of the very, very early battlefronts of Brexit, before the referendum, actually, was um, Polish truck drivers who were allowed to work excessive hours, much more than British truck drivers, because... Polish laws allowed them to sleep in their cabins, to work longer hours, whereas British truck drivers who contacted me, this is 2015, before the referendum, saying it's unfair, unfair, restrictive work in practice, but Polish law reigns supreme, whereas we're, we are still now tied to European law. I agree. People, a lot of people I meet, especially taxi drivers, um, people who work in warehouses, they want to work more hours. They need to work more hours. They're struggling to, for the cost of living. And they can opt out. Yeah, they can opt yeah. out. But I, I think this, this isn't about more unions. It's about less European Union control. And how the hell, Michelle, we're still having this conversation all these years after Brexit. Well, why I are we? Well, what, belief. Why do you think we are, then? Why do you think that things are not moving at a pace that would make you happier? Because the Conservatives aren't Conservative. 
They've, they've, they've surrendered on Brexit time and time again on fishing, on Northern Ireland, now on, on, on work well, rights. Well, Brexit's not Conservative. People voted Brexit across the political spectrum. So when yeah. you say a Conservative, not Conservative, that's not really... Not all Conservatives are Brexiteers and vice versa. I, I'm, I'm not Conservative. Mm. You know, I, I'm a proper Brexiteer, but I'm not Conservative. I've voted Conservative once in 2017. Regret it till my dying day. They betrayed us on Brexit. What I'm saying is they're the party in rule, they're the party in power whose job it was to get Brexit done. They failed. This is the final failure. But why, what, I would, be in, what would be in that? What would be in um, the Tories deliberately dragging their feet, creating, um, you know, stalling here, there and everywhere? They know that this country voted Brexit. They know that perhaps their opportunity for re-election depends on that. So why would they, to, to follow your train of logic there, why would they deliberately try to hinder the process? There's two reasons. Either they've lied... Um, or they realise they can't do it, so they've, made a, they've, they've written a cheque they can't cash, or, and here's the real point, that there, are, there are two Conservative parties within the Tory party. There, there's the Wets, the Lib Dems, the Shire Tories, <laughs> and there's the Red Wall. What's going to happen in the next general election? They're going to get wiped out and they need to have a forest fire and start again. This is an example of why the Conservative voters just don't think the Conservatives are Conservative anymore. You made a noise there, and halfway through that, I would try and describe or replicate the noise, but what was that about? What, what, what noise was this? It might have been a bit of trap wind, actually. <laughs> no, I, I, think think was, I, think I, I think you was responding to one of the points I that he was I making. I think I chuckled at something oh, right, about chuckle, the wets. Chuckle, right. yeah, yeah, no, the wets, and I, you know, it's an old term, but it... it there's something really important here, which is to say that in this country, because of first past the post, we have two very large parties, yeah. and within them they congeal people who disagree on so much. Now, mm. the, the, sort of, the, the spotlight has been on the Labour Party in the last decade. Oh, they can't get along. And it's not because they're all, you know, you know sh stupid and, and self-defeating and self-destructive. Many of them are, by the way, but mm. it's also an outgrowth of how our electoral system works and how it pushes together people who otherwise disagree on really big issues. And a case in point is the Conservatives on Brexit. Uh, you know, you have, you've had this coalition for decades between ultra-free marketeers, social liberals, people that want to leave the European Union, small business owners, ultra-large business, you know, people that hate the CBI, people that think the CBI is God's gift, the Confederation of British Industry. And I think what we're talking about here crystallises all of that. Well, CBI, I think that's yesterday's news now, isn't it? Uh, I don't think there's any yeah, coming back yeah. Retro, for those guys. Um, Patricia says, I'm totally convinced that the UK is still secretly within the EU. Um, John says, you know, basically this is a silly priority. All of this has worked for years, so why change it? But then would you apply that, um, that kind of sentiment to other things then? You could argue that actually lots of this stuff has, changed, has worked for years, so why get rid of any of it? Martin's point, uh, a very valid one if you ask me, is literally people voted for sovereignty, uh, for power to start and end, if you like, with... Uh, UK Parliament, so why then would you get rid of anything if, if your sentiment, uh, if you expand it there, John, and say that it was all working? Michelle, not me, says, well said, Martin, I voted leave and this lot of Tories have done nothing at all uh, to get us a real Brexit. She says uh, she wouldn't vote for the Tories again and she believes that there are millions like her. Yep. Uh, Leighton says, why not work 12 hours a day then, giving 24-hour cover, but work a month on and a month off? One of the things that I find interesting about uh, working patterns, a few of my family members are shift workers mm. um, and a few of them have got children. And I found it quite astonishing the way that various organisations seem to, the amount of notice they seem to give on their shift patterns. Right. And I sit there and I think, how do some employers expect their employees to be able to manage things like childcare and all the rest of it when their shift patterns seem to be changing with such frequency? Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure how right that is, because I am a capitalist, I am in favour of business and all the rest of it, but sometimes when I see the struggle that people have to manage childcare and shifts, I do, part of me thinks that that isn't right. Am I missing something? No, um, I, I think it's about freedom, um, freedom of practice, freedom of, of, of work. And I, I do worry, I know we, we disagree on unions because um, every time there's a power grab for more unionisation, it's actually, I, I think, more of a political land grab. And I think people are getting a bit sick of, of strike culture. We've had it for months now. And, of course, the left will always hold back. The answer is more unions. But I don't think the answer is more unions. Okay. Unions are a means to an end, aren't they? For instance, with, with junior doctors, they want a pay rise, and, and, and the union is a means to an end. It's, people don't join unions because joining unions is cool. I'm sure there's a, a small fraction of people that do, but ultimately, it's not really a left-right. I meet many Conservative, or I have met many Conservative voters, who are in trade unions, and they say, does a great job for me. Yeah, but it's become a political battle. I mean, you have to admit that the coordinated strike activity 
of, of teachers, of doctors, of nurses, of trains. It's designed to, to inflict maximum pain on the government. I, I mean, I, in a way, I wish it was coordinated because then it would come to a resolution one way or the other. Oh, but come on, you can't deny. It's not. If it's not, it might not be on the table coordinated no. as a, what's the word, a, what's the word, a grand strike, whatever it's called. Yeah. General strike. General strike. Get, yeah. yeah, it might not be as coordinated and as clear as that, but come on, you must think no, that all we, that's quite coordinated. I now. think we're going to generally genuinely disagree on this because Munison is, is the country's largest trade union they have repeatedly walked away from strikes. We've seen it with the NHS stuff, for instance. So the Royal College of Nurses is balloted successfully for more strikes. Unite also more strikes. Unison, by far the largest trade union in, in the public sector, has decided not to go on more strikes. So I, I don't think that's necessarily true. Unison is this ginormous union, and actually, more often than not, they're walking away from strike action. So, yeah, some trade unions, the CWU, for instance, postal workers, they are really up for, for a strike action because fundamentally the CEOs of that business, I think, are destroying a 500-year-old British brand, the Royal Mail. Um, and I think Conservatives and Labour voters should get behind that, you know. A majority of Conservative voters back bringing it into public ownership. So I, I think it's a bit more complex than that. I mean, when you've got the country's largest union generally deferring from strike action, I, I think saying that it's coordinated, I think it's an but overstatement. But what's destroying... I'm going off topic a little bit, but i respond to your point about the Royal Mail. What's, uh, what's destroying this great British brand of the Royal Mail, as you put mm. it, is changing uh, consumer habits. Yeah. Who, who writes letters anymore and purse letters? We all get, it's all we all about get parcels. Yeah, it's all about parcels, yeah. and this is one of the challenges, that actually there's a fine balance between allowing an organisation to develop <coughs> and evolve versus maintaining your workforce as it once was, the size, the scale, and the scope of responsibilities that they once had. And let's not even uh, touch on the whole AI thing, because I find it fascinating yeah. at the moment how many people are trying to push for non-compulsory redundancies and then you've got this AI thing creeping away and it's nipping at people's ankles and I worry uh, about what that would mean mm -hmm. for the future of people's jobs in this country, I can tell you.